Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This will be the start of a new story called Primrose. All credit to the author, their information can be found in the description below, as well as a link to the story if you would like to read along. This will be chapter 1 to 3. Also, don't forget to smash that like button and comment to help with the algorithm. It's much appreciated. Now let's get into the story. A youth with a golden cloak covering everything but his face flew. He dodged several beams of purple light as a woman with lavender eyes and the third eye in her forehead aimed at him. Her long kimono fluttered in the winds. The white fabric betrayed the dark heart of the wearer. Kagaya Atsutsuki, the rabbit goddess, the demoness. She flailed storms, she crushed mountains, bent reality to her whim. Yet, she couldn't bend the will of Naruto Uzumaki. The person she was fighting now, he flew around using powers he himself barely understood and dodged anything she threw at him. Suddenly he threw something from his hand. A knife? All three of her eyes widened as the knife sailed past her, and he appeared just behind her. A mighty kick sent her sprawling downward. Her eyes widened with pain, despite her healing factor making sure she wasn't seriously injured. Slamming into the earth below, purple grass fluttered across the ground from the impact winds. Landing on the ground, Naruto Uzumaki grunted as he breathed hard. She slowly got back up to her feet, floating up from the ground when she did. Had enough? Naruto shot at her. Because I'm just warming up. Bravado, incarnate of Ashura, will only get you so far. Your friend, the incarnation of Indra, is out of power. You, all alone, like you always were. Tell me, Uzumaki Naruto, what does it feel like to hold infinite power inside of you? Kagaya floated toward him slowly. What does it feel like to be a kami? I'm not a kami, Naruto stated as he got ready. My power comes from those that I call my friends. Your power is just stolen. Kagaya charged at him, and both clashed in a massive blast of power. An ethereal fist crashed against the golden one, with Naruto and her locking eyes. The pressure wave flattened the land around them. Their fight was on a whole other level. The Jinchuriki of the Kyubi no Yoko stood his ground as another ethereal fist was launched between them. The teen in front of her grunted as he was pushed back from that blow. However, he suddenly jumped back. Her eyes widened as she turned around to see several spheres of various elements heading toward her. Quickly her third eye widened, only for the spheres to turn into kanai. The kanai slammed into her arms, drawing blood. One of the kanai suddenly had Naruto appearing beside it and grabbing her shoulder. Without remorse, he slammed the blade into her chest before kicking her away. He floated there, watching as her body pushed the rest of the blades out. Her growling and demeanor signaled a change as she rose up to face him. There were no words as she looked right into him, then she smirked. As much as he continued to fight, his chakra system was slowly, but surely, frazzling out. Giving him a dark smile, she suddenly created several bones and shot them at him. Not wanting to end up like a Beto, Naruto dodged them. He in turn threw a raisin shuriken at her. The massive chakra was ineffective as it hit her, but allowed for good cover for him to escape. He flew as fast as he could to where the others were. Landing down, he collapsed to his knees. He looked over at Sakura who was still giving Sasuke chakra. Kakashi watched as the wind sphere began to die down. She'll be coming soon. Tell me something I don't Kakashi sensei. Naruto breathed as he tried to stand up. I'm almost drained. How? Sakura asked as she looked at him. You've got all the nine bijou and then some. Naruto took a deep breath. She absorbs what I throw at her. So I had to put in more effort. She then noticed something. Naruto was bleeding from his mouth. Naruto, you've got internal bleeding. The incarnation of Ashura nodded. I know. I can't afford the chakra to heal myself. Idiot. Sakura hissed as she walked over to him. Shosen Jutsu. He felt the chakra begin to heal him. She even began to transfer chakra over to him. Slowly, he felt his body become more relaxed as Sasuke stood up. The last Uchiha looked at Naruto, frowning as he heard the wind sphere die down. What's the plan? Sasuke asked as he looked at Naruto. What now? Oh god, you're asking me what we're going to do? Holy crap, Databeo. We may not actually pull this off. Naruto laughed cynically as he got up, still breathing hard. Giving up, dope? Sasuke inquired while holding out his hand. No way, bastard, Naruto replied as he was helped up. Sakura watched as both walked forward. Sasuke turned to her. Get as far as you can. What? Sakura looked bewildered. We're in this together. Sakura-chan, Naruto faced her when he looked over his shoulder. We need you alive after this. Sasuke nodded. Listen to him. 
We're the only ones that can win this fight. Kakashi looked at them both. They weren't going to admit it openly, but they both were low on chakra. He got up. He could feel Abito calling out to him to stand and protect the world he cherished. Sakura didn't listen to them either. She instead stood next to Sasuke. You two are boneheads, the both of you. You cannot seriously think I'd let you go and throw yourselves into the fire. Sakura had tears brimming at her eyes and allow you to die without me at your sides. She stood between them. You're not the only ones. Sasuke and Naruto looked at her with their mouths agape as Kakashi walked to the front of them. He turned to them, smiling as he lowered his mask, revealing his face for the first time. Slowly but surely, it dawned upon them all. This was it, the final push. Kagaya landed in front of them. Her power was increasing. She looked at them, smirking. They looked ready to die. As she grew one of her ashen bones, she saw that determination. Perhaps she could help them? However, what she didn't expect was Naruto allowing Kakashi and Sakura to run ahead of him and Sasuke. Are they fools? Kagaya threw the spears of bone. They'll get skewered. The bones impacted Kakashi and Sakura, only for them to suddenly explode. The black smoke filled the air around them as Kagaya fell into a trap. Her eyes widened when the smoke cleared to reveal hundreds of Naruto's, all of them holding large Rasengan. Senpo, Kudama Rasen Terengan. Kagaya's eyes widened. Even with so little chakra, he could do this? She readied herself to absorb the blasts, but suddenly felt something hit her back. It was Amaterasu. The flames burned heavily on her back. She was forced to shift her absorbing powers to handle it. However, that's when things started getting out of hand when she saw lightning-enhanced shuriken suddenly rush toward her, covered in black lightning. Kemui shuriken. Kakashi yelled out as he appeared all around her, using shadow clones. Impossible. She was forced to jump up. How did they win? She shot bones at random, determined to get collateral amongst the group. She failed to notice the Kimui enhanced shuriken impact each other, forming a large portal. Naruto's clones above her were getting destroyed left and right, but she never bothered to look down. Hey, you psychotic demoness. Kagaya looked down, her eyes widening tremendously. Dozens of small raisin shuriken flew from the portal. Naruto's clones from above flew faster and the raisin shuriken from below began to grow larger. Looking for an escape, Kagaya tried to form a portal to fly into, only for Kamui to seal it no sooner than she reached for it. Kakashi's right hand began to bleed slightly as he watched her glare at him. He wore only a proud smirk on his face, as if he were proud to have made sure she'd suffer from fear. Indeed, Kagaya felt that fear when Naruto's attacks finally impacted. Her Rina Sharingan ran wild, trying to negate, block, and absorb attacks. However, she felt various pieces of her get blown off. Blood slowly dropped down from her mouth as more and more of his attacks breached. This was impossible. She looked around, trying to find an exit, but instead Naruto himself and Sasuke himself assisted by a Naruto clone flew toward her. Their hands with the marks were outstretched. This was it. The time was now. Her broken body began to heal, trying to rapidly repair critical damage so she could move. It was to no avail as Naruto grabbed her right arm, and Sasuke grabbed her arm. Or so it would appear, instead, Zetsu had flowed itself around to protect its mother. Kagaya smirked, Good job, my son. Now, Okasan, Zetsu gleefully screamed, Kill them both. Bones shot out from her palms, impacting both Naruto and Sasuke. However, they just both smirked before transforming into Kakashi's clones. To her added surprise, both clones suddenly glowed bright blue. Kagaya screamed as lightning chakra coursed through her. The real Naruto and Sasuke stood by Sakura, who looked at them, now. Naruto flew up, Sasuke turned to her, now. She grabbed Sasuke by his arm before twirling him and throwing him. Kagaya started to recover as Naruto sent one of the spheres to Sasuke which formed into a disc he could ride on. Surfing through the air, Naruto and Sasuke both felt a sudden wave of chakra come from Kagaya. The demoness roared out as she powered through the lightning chakra, spotting Kakashi, you. Kakashi just smirked as she sent an ashen bone toward him, only for it to phase right through. She screamed in rage before her eyes focused on Naruto and Sasuke. She barely had time to warp away when they got to her. However, warping behind them she found that another trap had been laid out. Sakura was on the ground gripping chakra wire Sasuke had made. She suddenly pulled with tremendous force. The wire wrapped around the Atsutsuki matriarch, cutting into exposed flesh like her face. She roared as Sakura pulled tighter. I'm a woman too, you know, 
Sakura yelled up at her. So don't you dare count me out. Suddenly, she felt the incarnations of her grandchildren behind her. She turned her head to face them. Her eyes widened when she started forming small portals behind her to send ashen bones at them. She knew they were real. They had to be. Sakura let go of the wires and hurled two kanai as hard as she could. The kanai flew fast enough to where they were right in front of her. Sasuke's Rina Sharingan eye widened as he grabbed Naruto. The bone was just about to scratch him when he suddenly disappeared with Naruto in tow. The woman's eyes widened when her Rina Sharingan was suddenly hit by two kanai. Piercing right through, she screamed in pain, clutching her forehead as her healing factor pushed the kanai out. However, her most powerful asset closed healing itself. She suddenly snapped at the feeling of someone gripping her front shoulder. Sasuke. Naruto screamed as his son Marks glowed brightly. Naruto. Sasuke roared at the same time as his best friend. Both shouted with all their worth, Rakuto. Chibaku Tensei. Kagaya screamed in anguish as she was sent flying up, the woman thrashing as earth cracked around the area. Slowly, but surely going upwards. Slamming into her, Naruto and Sasuke fell backward getting caught by Kakashi as the mountains around them slammed into the demoness. Naruto's six-path sage mode dropped as he and Sasuke landed on the ground with Kakashi holding them both. The duo was breathing hard as Sasuke's Rina Sharingan lost its tomo. Both looked at one another, slowly but surely, a smile formed on their faces. Bringing up their fists, Naruto and Sasuke bumped each other. Sakura looked at them, holding back tears before falling to her knees beside them, wrapping her arms around both. Team 7 had just saved the entire world, not just their village. Sasuke then spoke. How did you know that I could teleport us both? I don't know. Naruto looked at his right palm. That Mark just told me. Mark. Sasuke looked at him. His eyes widened as he looked up. A loud explosion echoed across the area as the new moon being formed exploded. You've got to be kidding me, Databeo. Naruto breathed as he watched a giant white, misshapen palm push a piece away. A giant, very malformed, rabbit screamed as it suddenly formed the bijou behind it, only for the heads to pull themselves out and fall to the ground as the beasts. They all looked weakened, tired. Kurama was the only one conscious. The Kyubi no Yoko looked at Naruto. Brat, get out of here. Kurama, guys, what's going on? Naruto questioned them, looking for signs of any movement. Kitten, Kagaya forced our chakra into her system. She broke the seal. Now her own chakra is running wild. She can't even contain it. Her intent is to start anew. She is going to destroy all dimensions. Matatabi answered as she raised her head up. There's nothing we can do. Suddenly the rabbit's mouth opened and kept opening like a snake until a large black ball of chakra formed. It was like the sphere Naruto had behind him and it just kept growing, consuming chakra around it. A massive entity collapsed into this black ball of energy crackling with purple lightning as everyone felt reality distort around them. The skies all began to crackle with purple lightning. What was dark blue was slowly becoming a sickening yellow. Naruto looked at Sakura, then at Sasuke. Kakashi looked defeated. No! Naruto squeezed his hands until they started bleeding. I refuse that. I refuse to believe there's nothing we can't do. Naruto looked right at Sasuke. We're going to do the ceiling jutsu again. Naruto! Kakashi looked at him. There's not enough chakra between either of you to do that. I don't care. Naruto screamed as he walked forward. I'm not going to let some power-hungry demoness destroy all that I care about. Tell me Ashura. Tell me Indra. How does it feel to be powerless? Trapped. Without a way to save all that you built. All that was yours. Kagaya's voice boomed across the area. Heavy in tone like a demon. The Uzumaki stared right up at her. His anger breaking as six paths sage mode exploded around him. He roared as he started absorbing any nature chakra around him, grunting as his hands started to glow brighter. Sasuke watched with Rinnegan as Naruto's chakra system began to tear itself apart. He saw the inner gates start to break open. You idiot stop, you're going to kill yourself. Sasuke screamed as Naruto's rage exploded around him. The blonde flew toward Kagaya. I will not let you destroy all that I love. Kagaya's form shifted back into her original form just in time to point a palm toward Naruto and blast him with a wave of chakra. The incarnation of Ashura flew back, crashing into the ground as the chakra washed over him. It ended soon afterward, leaving him with burns as he struggled to stand back up. The demoness sneered at him. Know your place, animal. Naruto punched the ground. 
charging back up as fast as he could. Shut up with your lofty bullcrap. You say we're thieves, but I saw the people that you took. The people that you force-fed that damn tree with. You're nothing but a monster. Naruto clapped his hands together as a battle avatar formed over him in the likeness of Kurama. And I'm going to put you down. Many have tried. Kagaya readied another wave of chakra. All of them became one with me. The last Uzumaki screamed as he flew toward her, intending to use his avatar as a shield. Kagaya merely chuckled as she dialed up the power of her energy wave. The blast echoed as it launched. Sasuke's eyes widened when Naruto's avatar broke immediately on impact. He almost took the full power, falling toward the ground as he was covered in white light. Kagaya laughed manically, watching as Naruto struggled to stand back up. However, something was off. He should have been turning into ash. Instead, adamantine chains covered him, and she swore she saw a red-headed woman in the light with him. Naruto knew this warmth. Okasan? Kushina Uzumaki looked right into her son's eyes. Naruto. She smiled at him. I'm proud of you. Everyone is? Naruto thought of everyone, slowly feeling something enter him. He saw multiple streams of chakra, all of them like palms laying on him. He looked at Kushina. Her own chakra was flowing into him. Hagoromo was staring at Shinju. It began to move as cocoons began to fall and hit the ground. His eyes widened. He still didn't have his seals back. Watching as one opened, revealing the form of one Hinata Hyuga, he noticed the glowing of her right palm. That's when he saw streams of their chakra begin to flow toward the sky. Can you feel them, Naruto? They're breaking the dream. They're giving you one last chance. Hagoromo gripped his staff. Make it count. That chakra is mine. Give it to me. Give it to me. Kagaya screamed as she thrashed about, slamming more waves of chakra down on Kushina's spirit. The redhead winced as she looked at her only child. Naruto, they're giving you one last chance. We can't do the ceiling jutsu. Naruto lamented as he felt himself begin to power back up to his fullest. Without the moon. Then the sun must wash away. Naruto's eyes widened when he heard his mother interrupt him. It must wash away the darkness. Kagaya roared as she slammed another wave of chakra down. Kushina grunted in pain. Naruto, I have to go now. Kushina's barrier began to break. She then smiled at him. If you don't make it, dinner will be ready. Tears spilled from Naruto's eyes as he nodded. Okay. Okasan, I love you. I love you too. Her spirit disappeared as her barrier broke. Tell that dumb fox to help you out. Kushina? Kurama looked down and saw a little bit of her chakra enter him, jump-starting his own system again. He grunted as he felt himself get washed with the same type of chakra he felt Naruto getting. Naruto. The white light washed over Naruto as he stood there. He felt no pain. Naruto. The white light grew in intensity. Yet the only light shining through was the golden chakra inside of him. Naruto. Naruto broke the white light. Kagaya's eyes widened as the sphere continued to grow behind her. Standing where her light burned the earth black was Naruto, covered in a golden light. New good Adama. Something began to shift though. The teen had not nine spheres, but ten. Slowly, but surely, he walked from the blackened earth as Kurama joined his side. Outstretching his right fist, Kurama bumped it before flowing into Naruto. His power increased dramatically as a result. Kagaya looked down at him. She could see chakra streams going into him instead of her. What is the meaning of this? She screamed as Naruto took a deep breath. Tell me. The shinobi world is free. Your light doesn't work anymore. Or should I say your dream world is no more. We are shinobi, Naruto spoke for everyone as he pointed to his chest with his thumb. And our nindo is never to back down or submit. He glared right at her, especially to monsters like you. Crouching down, Naruto looked over at Sasuke and Sakura. He gave them a smile. Sasuke recognized that smile. He got up to stop Naruto, only for the blonde to fly straight up. A trail of light flowed from him, as if he was a shooting star in a night sky. The sky darkened as Naruto noticed the sphere reaching critical mass. Using his ten spheres, he sent eight of them down toward the other bijou. Slowly the chakra from the spheres leaked into them each of them glowing golden in color as they woke up and stood up. Matatabi, who had been struggling before, stood up. Kitten. Another sphere landed on the ground, forming Kurama, who looked confused as he felt slightly drained again. He saw the other bijou, his brothers and sisters, with the same glow. They all looked at one another, confused until the tenth sphere formed a clone. Guys, the sphere clone looked at them. 
I'm going to take Kagaya inside the sphere. You need to work in conjunction with Sasuke and Kakashi to bend space and time around the sphere. Form a black hole, basically? Sun Goku asked. The sphere clone nodded. Yes, and don't let up. If the sun and moon cannot seal away the darkness, then the sun shall wash it all away. Naruto, Yul. Kurama felt something from his eyes. Die. I know. Sasuke looked on the verge of tears as he watched the actual Naruto fly toward Kagaya still, dodging light beam after light beam. Naruto's clone looked at Sasuke and Sakura. I love you both. Sakura, when we were kids, I mistook the love I felt for you as something like romantic, but I just... Naruto's clone started to falter a little bit. I love you like the sister I always wanted. Naruto, you don't have to do this. Sakura yelled as she watched him fly off. The clone shook his head. I have to. This is for our world. Sasuke didn't hide his tears. He looked right at Naruto. Why you? Because it was always going to be me, Naruto's clone gave a toothy smile. I never backed down. I never quit. And in the end, Naruto and Sasuke clashed jutsu. The waves of power washed the area in bright light. The blonde and Hyuga heiress sat near a swing set. He comforted her as she had just been bullied for her eye color again. Kiba, Shikamaru, Chuji, and Naruto all jumped out of a window. Iruka was in hot pursuit of them all, irritated that they were once again skipping class. Shion and Naruto descended into the volcano holding hands and forming a joint Rasengan to defeat an ancient demon. Kakashi and Naruto clashed Rasengan. Kushina and Minato cuddled a newborn blonde infant. Iruka smiled as he handed Naruto his first bowl of ramen, smiling as he let the child wear his headband. Hundreds, thousands, of people stood behind Naruto Uzumaki. Every one of them had chakra flowing into him. His own chakra system was burning out. He was burning. But those flames didn't hurt. They pushed him. The sun was rising. My definition of shinobi is the same as family. Naruto's clone's glare fixated right on Sasuke. That's why I knew you were in trouble, because the real you would never become like Kagaya is now. Dobe. Sasuke mumbled as he reached out to him. Don't. Naruto's clone smiled. See you around Sasuke, and thank you. The clone began to fade. Now go to your job, idiot. I love you, Nissen. Naruto no. Sasuke screamed as the clone faded away. The bright shooting star slammed into the dark goddess. It sent them both flying into the dark sphere. Slowly the sphere began to contort. Inside of it, nothing but white light. Kagaya flew toward the top to escape only for Naruto to appear in front of her. Where do you think you're going? Naruto punched her down before reappearing below her. Suddenly, he smirked as chains emerged from him, wrapping themselves around her. The woman thrashed about, screaming her head off as she tried to break free. The demoness growled, trying to produce ashen bones, but found that her own power was draining quickly. The sphere was absorbing both of their chakras. No. You'll kill us both, you fool. I know. Naruto wrapped the chains tightly around himself as well to make sure she couldn't get out. But that's fine. Why would you go so far for the very people that hated you? Kagaya questioned him as the sphere began to echo. Naruto chuckled a little bit. Those very people saved me from myself. I don't know what will happen next. However, I do know that I've lived a good 17 years, unlike you. Naraku has a special place for people like, the blonde's six paths sage mode ended as the sun mark on his palm mark disappeared. I don't know about me, but I know you'll suffer for all the pain you've caused. To think, I, the mother of all chakra, she growled. Defeated by a fragment of it. I'm no fragment, a loud boom echoed around them. Make peace Kagaya, you don't have long to do so. I will come back, I will come back and take what is mine. She screamed as the sphere collapsed around them. Sasuke's eyes bled as he fell to his knees. His own palm mark disappeared. The sphere exploded, only to collapse in on itself as Kakashi's eyes bled all the same as Sasuke's. The bijou held their palms out to the sphere. Slowly, the sky darkened around them. Sakura was sobbing as she placed her hands on their backs. Naruto. They suddenly felt something pull them away as the darkness grew around them appearing in front of everyone as they began to wake up at the giant tree. Hinata's eyes widened as Hagoromo frowned. He saw that Naruto wasn't among them. What happened? Hagoromo asked. Naruto. Sasuke started as he looked at Hinata and then faded away. I'm so sorry. Hinata lowered her head as Kiba stood by her. Her other teammate Shino did as well. Slowly, it dawned upon Minato what just happened, and he sighed. He watched as Hinata collapsed, sobbing. 
He looked at Sasuke. The Uchiha was sobbing as well, punching the ground. Don't weep, Sasuke looked at Minato. You'll tarnish his memory, sasuke -kun. Minato looked at Hinata. And you need to be strong. My son wouldn't want you anyone to break down over him. Instead, celebrate the gift he gave us. He looked at Minato. Your kiddo was awesome. Yo, world class to the max. He even gave old Madara Uchiha that axe. The Edo Tensei just laughed a little bit. I know. And for the first time I get to sit down with him and have dinner. Hagoromo took a deep breath as he opened his eyes. I should be going, Sasuke. Sasuke stood up, looking at the sage. What is it? Do not follow the path of my eldest son, even if it seems like the world won't get along with a gentle hand. A gardener can only cultivate life, move it in the right direction when required. If he tries to force it, Hagoromo looked right into Sasuke's soul. That very life would die. Frowning, Sasuke looked around. I don't think I'll be alive to even try anything. I doubt that, the sage said. Because without you, this world would have died as well. Sasuke sighed. Can I really amount to what he left behind? Hagoromo lowered down to the ground before holding out his staff. Only one way to find out. Naruto's eyes slowly opened as he looked around. Okasan. Otosan. Taking a deep breath, the blonde looked at the darkness he was floating in. He could feel his heartbeat. When he died before getting Ashura's powers, he didn't feel his heart. He was still alive. How? He could never know. The teen grimaced as he tried to move his arms. He looked at them. They were both black and blue. It was hell. The pain was searing and hot. Taking another labored breath, Naruto then smirked when he saw Kagaya's lifeless body floating by him. Seemingly lifeless anyway, he watched as she turned over. She had a shocked expression plastered all over her face. Oi. Naruto called out to her. You dead? Or what? Suddenly her left eye moved to look at him, making him scream. Are you kidding me right now, Databeo? You little thief. Kagaya reached out to him. How dare you? Not good. She can heal and warp dimensions. Think of something, anything. Naruto had a light bulb moment and formed a Rasengan in his right hand. Except it didn't work. He couldn't form Chakra. By the looks of it, neither could Kagaya. For all her anger, she seemed just as badly damaged if not a little more. Zetsu wasn't anywhere near her, but Naruto knew he didn't escape the blast more than likely vaporized or cannibalized by his own mother to survive. Kagaya struggled to look at him, but she had a sneer on her face. Lead, a good life, huh? Then why are you in Nariku with me? Pfft. Naruto rolled his eyes, passing by. Thought I'd give you one last send-off. You're a terrible liar, she admitted as she looked at him. Because even I don't know where we are. Well, hooray for me then, Databeo. I'm more than happy to slowly die here if it means you suffer just a little bit more. Naruto said to her, nothing but malice in his voice, you deserve it for everything. Oh please, spare me. Kagaya replied as she glared at him, you're no more a victim than a thief. My parents, my clan, my friends, and my entire race suffered under you. You're a demoness and all for what? Because someone hurt you. You act like that the only person that mattered was yourself. Well, look where that got you. Floating in here with dumb old motormouth me. Naruto continued to ramble. Ain't karma something else? Silence. Kagaya yelled as she looked down on him from where she started to float above him. Screw you. Naruto screamed as he flicked her off, attempting to raise his hand as well. He grunted in pain. When my arms heal up before I starve to death, I'm going pound some sense into your dumbass head. Kagaya just looked at him. You're very uncouth. What the hell does uncouth mean, Smelly? I've been fighting a literal war for three days straight. Of course, I'm going to stink. Naruto yelled as he glared at her. The rabbit goddess just had her right twitch. It means you're very rude. Oh, I'm sorry. Naruto then realized what he said. Why the hell am I sorry, Databeo? Pinching her nose, Kagaya just looked down at him. If gods truly exist, this is torture enough. Well, Naruto looked away. I can't move. And you're not exactly any much better than I am. What are you suggesting, thief? Kagaya inquired. I'm just saying either we float here in silence, possibly starve to death, because you can't activate your third eye, thank you Sakura, and just complain about how much life completely sucks. Naruto then looked her right in the eye, or we could just float here and make peace with ourselves and then starve to death. I don't like either scenario, Kagaya grumbled as she looked down at him, both end in something I much rather avoid. Coward! Naruto bashed her as he glared right at her. You're a frigging coward. 
You're so scared of a challenger you try to literally eat the world, and you even try to kill your own children. Don't you know how? Much of a blessing a child is, Naruto growled as he felt anger boil inside of him. In your name, I can name several dozen children that lost their lives, name a few more who were forced to be Jinchuriki, and then we come back to you how many? I don't know what you're getting at. Before she could finish, the death glare got to her. Thousands. And there it is, Naruto spat in her direction, but it just flopped back down on his face. You, anyway, want to know what my parents got? Do I care? Kagaya questioned him. One minute, her eyes looked right at him. They got one minute. One minute before Black Zetsu put his manipulation of Abido to the fullest. Naruto then just furrowed his eyes at her. As much as I hate you, I think I pity you more. Oh, she hummed. I think I can see it. You were probably hurt so bad that you never wanted to be hurt again, which is why you ate the fruit, so that you can stop the pain. But in the end, Naruto sighed as he looked at the void. You only created more. Naruto bit his lip. I grew up being hurt by others. Constantly, never ending. Most of my earliest memories were always someone walking in a room, checking my seal, and then just walking back out. The Sandame Hokage, Gigi, as I called him at the beginning, just dropped off living expenses. There was one time in my life I went an entire month without food from the village because some sorry bastard stole what little I had. Naruto then closed his eyes and relaxed, but I still fought to protect my village. Why? Kagaya inquired as she started to feel something. You don't make sense. You had all the power to destroy everything, Naruto interjected. Yeah, I could have easily met Kurama and just go wild. Part of me every day for the longest time wished that he destroyed the entire village, but the very few friends I made made me happy. Naruto remembered I am and Tuchi Ichiraku and Iruka. Chuckling, that's all she could hear before he looked at her. Mind telling me what's so funny? Now that I think about it, he laughed. My weakest jutsu worked on you. And that would be? Kagaya scoffed as she glared at him. Someone has a dirty mind. Naruto teased as he hinted at it. I, you, that that was because it was completely random. She screamed at him with her cheeks flustered. Who even does that during a fight? Ignorant little fox child. Dumb bunny, Naruto shot back. I guess it's ironic that you lost to me, considering foxes eat rabbits, Databeo. She just sighed. Okay, fine. You're right. I got distracted. Completely uncouth of you to give me a right hook afterward. Uncouth, sheesh. Just use normal words like rude. Naruto complained as he looked past her. Is that light? She flipped over, staring up from the void. It is, and, getting closer? Well, I'll be damned. I just may get out of this yet. Naruto laughed before focusing. That isn't light. Huh. She looked at him. Then what did you hear that? Who are you? What are you? Iam Kaguya Tsutsuki. Iam. She didn't even get to finish before the light hit her. It took the form of a dragon that glowed purple and snatched her in its jaws. Naruto was left mortified. He didn't even mean to reach out for her. The strangest thing was there was no blood, no gore, just one minute of her being there and the next totally gone. Ah crap! Naruto chattered in fear. I'm seriously going out as food. Really, Databeo? We have judged you. Naruto flipped over using all his willpower. Child of hope? A golden dragon flowed toward Naruto. His eyes widened as it opened its maws. He was powerless to stop it. A silvery light filled his vision. He felt cold air rushing over him. Looking around, he saw that he was falling. He almost wanted to celebrate, but the cold air made him rethink that celebration. It hit. Reality did anyway. The blonde flipped in the air, unable to control himself as he looked down to see a nearby river of sorts. There was a heavy amount of sand all around him to boot and he noticed that a broken moon hung high in the sky. Screaming as he fell, the blonde landed in the small oasis before floating back up to the top. Floating there, he just looked up at the broken moon before closing his eyes. Karama. Naruto mentally called out for his friend. Where are you when I need you, buddy? Databeo? The splashing and wind made the water flow him to its shoreline. He rested his head on the mud. Laying there he failed to hear the shouting of some people. Uzumaki Naruto was still alive. A caravan of people had been walking through the hot desert sun, with night soon coming upon them. They had very little, being escorted by students of Lower Shade Academy. Passing near an oasis to collect some water for them and their beasts of labor, they only heard the crackling of thunder. Dorm. S weren't uncommon in autumn, though, very few clouds hung in the air. 
That's when a little girl spotted something that fell into the oasis. Her cries for help caused the students to run over toward the fallen object. They found that it was a person, heavily injured. The doctor of the caravan ordered that he be brought to her tent immediately as they had begun to set up. She had no medical equipment, instead relying on her ability to heal others. Placing her hands on his chest, she found, as an assistant cut open the fabric of clothing, that he had scars. The young man may have been a recently graduated student from somewhere, or simply a mercenary who had a very bad day in the office. Judging by his whiskers, she assumed that he was a faunus, a being with an animal trait. The woman saw that he had internal bleeding. Quickly, she applied her aura toward his stomach. When she did, she found extensive abdominal injuries. He was barely hanging on as is, and the possible internal bleeding was not helping him either. He grunted in pain, his blue eyes slowly opening every so often. Help! We're trying to help, young man. The doctor spoke with a calm voice. Please relax. He whimpered in pain when he tried to adjust himself. That's when a wad of blood spewed from his mouth, landing on her orange tunic. She watched as his eyes rolled back, going limp, grunting. She watched him convulse before going into action. She made sure to clear everything away from him as he started to foam. He was suffering a massive seizure. Blood and foam formed at his mouth, leaking down the side. Every so often she would see his eyes dart back and forth, silent screams forming at his lips. As quickly as the seizure came, however, slowly, it went. As he stopped squirming, she held him down. The blonde, stained red on the face, just laid there. He was breathing, not calmly, wheezing at best. There was something else. He looked like he was crying. In fact, there were tears slowly forming at his eyes and traveling downward. His labored breathing slowly became more normal. She reapplied her semblance, healing him as best she could. He grunted in tremendous pain, his hands twitching. They were probably just as broken as his arms. She looked over at her assistant. The boy nodded and walked over to get a syringe and filled it up with a substance. Walking back over, the teen looked at her. Doctor, I got the morphine. Here, she grabbed one of his hands to expose a vein. In there, hopefully, it lulls him to sleep and stops the pain. The assistant slowly placed the needle within the vein. Squeezing the plunger, the clear liquid slowly drained into his arm. The teen winced at the feeling. Naruto Uzumaki felt a slight burning sensation at his very core before slowly succumbing to the medicine. His eyes slowly closed. His head went limp as he gave slight grunts and moans of pain. Naruto was floating in the waters of his psyche. In this long-visited place, there was no longer a cage and no longer a giant fox. The blonde just laid there, floating in the waters as they started draining. It was a sign that his chakra was running low, and he could see the busted pipes that he thought were his chakra network. Karama, Naruto whimpered out as he kept looking up toward the ceiling. Can you hear me? There was no answer, not even a grunt. Naruto's eyes watered as he turned his head toward the blank spot in the room. A cold came over him. It was a fearful cold, but a cold of not seeing what should be there. In his last act, he made sure to give Karama to the world. He fully expected to die. He should have died. Naruto closed his eyes. I'm hurting. It hurts so much. Call me an idiot. Naruto grunted out. Tell me I'm some stupid dumbass. God damn it. It hurts. Someone gave me something. I don't feel right. Are they putting me down? Where am I? Am I even alive? Is this just a dream? Naruto continued to ramble before the scenery shifted around. The ceiling opened to reveal storm clouds. Rain pelted him as he laid there. He couldn't see anyone, not Karama, not Son Goku, and not even Matatabi. Laying there, he felt a sensation he hadn't felt in a very long time. He felt empty, but that wasn't the sensation. He felt alone. This darkness, Naruto looked up and saw the storm clouds before closing his eyes. Please, I don't want to be lost in it again. You watch, I'll be the greatest Hokage there ever was. Naruto Uzumaki, Godame Hokage, Databeo. Naruto's eyes snapped open to see a younger version of himself looking up at the storm clouds. I'm not scared of you. I'm not afraid to fight. I'm no ack. The small blonde child is hit to the ground. Naruto watches as dark figures descend on him and beat him into the ground. Kitsune brat. Monster. Idiot. Loser. Naruto grips his head, holding his ears. Shut up. You'll be forgotten. You'll be alone. You'll never be remembered. You are a failure, a failure. Useless twerp. Shut up. Naruto screams. 
He thrashes about in the water. Shut up. Naruto watches as everything fades to white. There he saw a familiar face. Hagar. Omo, of all people, and he was floating without his staff. The sage of six paths looks toward Naruto, sighing. He brings a smile up to his face. Naruto-san, Hagoromo greeted the child of destiny with a smile. Fancy meeting you here. I sense that you were troubled. Old man sage. Naruto felt able to stand up. What is going on? In due time, Hagoromo answered the blonde. It seems that you've been called to a higher purpose. What do you mean? Naruto stood there before noticing something in the distance. Who is that? Hagoromo turned to the figure. That is the light god. Light god. Naruto clutched his head. So, am I being collected since I died or something? You're not dead. Naruto turned to the figure who was now suddenly standing by Hagoromo. I merely chose you. Ah, Naruto screamed as he pointed at the figure. You were just over there, Databeo. I am everywhere, yet I am not. The curse and blessing of being omnipresent. The God of Light stated as he folded his arms, his deer-like horns sticking up like a crown. Naruto just blinked his eyes. Omni what now? Omnipresent, the Light God repeated. It means to be everywhere and nowhere. Oh, I think I get it, Naruto sheepishly replied while rubbing the back of his head. The God of Light just shook his head. No, you do not. Well, I'm sorry, Databeo. Quite frankly, I am coming to terms that I'm not dead, and I feel this strange heat in my body. I feel like I want to puke, and then I get brought in here by Old Man Sage, and now I'm dealing with someone who's probably Kagai on steroids. Naruto raged as he held his fist up. So, I'm sorry if I can't understand fancy words. Hagoromo pinched his nose. Naruto, must you be so uncouth? Gah. Naruto gripped his head. Uncouth, Omni this. Next thing you'll tell me is that this is not real, and I'm just really in Naraku. The light god looked at Hagoromo. You warned me that he'd be a little unnatural for a hero. I warned you about other things, especially with your brother getting a hold of my mother, but my words always fell on deaf ears. Hagoromo stated to the god next to him. Naruto-san is not without intellect, he just lacks tact. What the? Naruto looked around his pockets. I was supposed to bring Tic Tacs? Oh, for the love of all life and creation. The light god bemoaned as he pinched his nose. It means you have no sense of vocabulary, no way to articulate and understand proper jargon or wording. So, I'm an idiot? Naruto questioned as he folded his arms. Well, that's not very nice. Silence. The light god's voice boomed in the void. He then took a deep breath to compose himself. The god took a minute. I believe that's the first time someone has ever gotten on my nerves. Besides the god of darkness, Hagoromo pointed out. Hear that over there. You're now second only to the evilest being in existence, Naruto. Naruto rubbed the back of his head. Well, geez, I'm sorry. All is forgiven, for now at least. Tell me, does this area suit you? The god of light inquired. Does, does it matter? Naruto sounded confused. You mean I can choose? Not you, but I know what you were thinking of. The light god answered before holding up his right hand. A loud snap echoed before a flood of light blinded the area. Naruto opened his eyes. He was standing in Mayaboku. The air smelled the same, the feel of the humidity and such. He saw the many waterfalls, the various forest critters. A ladybird flew up to him, landing on his finger. Watching the insect flutter its wings, Naruto didn't acknowledge Hagoromo or the light god behind him. The teen saw everything. It was exactly like M.T. Mayaboku, just no sign of any of the toads. Turning to face the two that brought him here in the first place, Naruto looked on confused. He watched as the ladybird flew away. M.T. Mayaboku, exactly as you remembered during your sage training. I peered into the veil of your mind. I've looked into your memories. You hold this place much closer to your heart than the village of Kanoha. The god explained his choice of scenery. And I feel sympathy for your harsh upbringing. However, the light god then pointed out. There is always those who suffer more, and you seem to gravitate towards them. A uh, thanks, I guess? Naruto offered up in confused gratitude. The blonde looked at the two. So, why am I here? You and Kagaya Atsutsuki breached the realm of creation. Your final act together was both a sacrifice and a saving grace. For you've caught my eye, while Kagaya caught the eye of my brother. I do not know what he has done with her. He is twisted and has on occasion sabotaged our joint creation. The God of Light held out his hand. Mankind. 
Hagoromo frowned a little, sighing. In truth, Naruto-san, you're alive because the light god is curious. So, Naruto looked downcast. All I am is just a toy? Far from it. Naruto snapped his head back up to face the god. You're an anomaly just like Kagaya. Birth may have been different. The class you grew up in, beyond different. However, the life you led and the life she gave up were one and the same. Kagaya wanted to protect her lover and her children. Her lover turned on her and the people followed suit. The light god created a miniature set for display, color-coded. Regular people were black in color, Kagaya was white, and her lover was red. Naruto could see where her lover and the people chased her down. That was before a large object made of green in the shape of a tree and a golden light glowing from it. He watched as she took the light, consuming it. And then, everyone turned to dust. Kagaya wiped out nearly all of humanity, the light god said as he made the figures disappear. In her hubris to gain the power to protect all that she loved, she destroyed it with that very power. Naruto lowered his head. So that's why she asked why I decided to help the very people that did those things to me. Kagaya is a tragic character, the light god lamented. It saddens me when one takes such a path. Naruto frowned and nodded in agreement. Yeah, and to think I could have just as easily taken that step? Hagoromo looked at the reincarnation of his youngest son. Life exists on a balance, Naruto-san. There must be balance for tranquility and peace to prosper. The former Jinchuriki took a deep breath. So, can I finally drift into the pure world? No, the light god answered. Child of hope, I found it a shame for such a life to be thrown away. But I don't want to be here, not without Kurama, not without Sasuke and Sakurachan. I hate this feeling. I don't know how long I've been asleep, and I just, I just... Naruto started to sob as he brought his forearm up to cover his face. I really wish that I could just see Kurama again. The God of Light looked at the young man, then smiled as he brought his hand onto him. Child, you must remain strong. How? Naruto lamented as he looked up at the Light God. Kurama was my closest friend, and Sasuke and Sakura were my siblings. I, I have no one here. I brought you here because I saw a pure heart. This world needs that. The light god then looked up and smiled. Ah, it would seem our time has come to a close. Wait. Naruto reached out to the duo. When will I see you again? When the time is right, Hagoromo bowed his head. Please, go in peace, Naruto-san. Naruto watched as they left before the whole world became dark. The gasping of a young man lying in pure white linen made the nurse jump. The room itself was stainless, pearly white with some windows overlooking the city. The nurse watched as the teen reached for the tube in his nostrils. She grabbed his hands. Sir, she struggled to keep him from pulling the tube out. Sir, look at me. I'm Nurse Koral. You're in the hospital, sir. Please calm yourself. Naruto breathed hard as he finally gave up. Dopia vuaka, e re. The nurse made out the broken word. You're in vacuo first general hospital. Va, ku, o. Naruto breathed out. Yes, vacuo, Coral answered as she looked at him. You were brought here three months ago, critically injured. I, and a team of surgeons, worked round the clock to keep you alive once you got here. You actually died a few times on the table, she looked around. Sir, I'm going to go get the doctor. Please do not pull at the tube. Naruto flopped his head back, watching as the nurse ran out. The teen breathed hard, looking at the painfully bright room. His eyes ached from it all. The teen swayed his head on the pillow. He felt hollow. Looking around, he noticed tall buildings just outside the window. They looked no different than Suna's buildings. Then he started to remember some details. Landing in water was one of them, but it was the dry air he felt when he exited the strange void. Desert air, at least he thought it was. It felt exactly the way the Great Wind Desert felt. The doctor walked in. She had long lavender-colored hair and yellow eyes. The lady wasn't very tall. In fact, she was shorter than most people Naruto knew. The doctor looked him over, checking his pulse, and looked at his monitor. She had webbed hands, not human ones. Not if you can understand me. Naruto nodded weakly, making her smile. Hey there, sunshine. She greeted him with a joke. My name is Dr. Sahaba Soul. I've been taking care of you for the last three months. Three months? Naruto inquired as best he could. She nodded. Yes, you were brought in with what I can describe as the worst beatdown I've seen in a very long time. You're very lucky between your heart stopping several times and the fear of brain damage, you came out of surgery successfully. We applied biodegradable stitches that have already disappeared. 
You had massive internal injuries, the doctor revealed as she read over his file. Luckily, you have a strong aura. Thank you, Naruto thanked her, watching as she smiled in response. Sahaba then looked at his monitor. We're going to monitor you for 24 hours before we remove that ventilator that's been helping you breathe in your sleep. At which time, we'll probably start seeing how well your nerves are, she grimaced a little before continuing, and work on removing the catheter. Naruto looked confused before he glanced down past his feet. He saw two tubes, his eyes slightly widened before rolling to the back of his head. The doctor chuckled a little bit before walking out of the room. The nurse patted the teen's shoulder. Please rest, sir. Coral requested as she nodded her head and exited the room. A few days had passed since he woke up. Naruto was leaning up from the bed, filling out some paperwork as best as he could. Despite the language verbally being the same, he found that he couldn't read it. He sighed, looking at the nurse. Is there something wrong, sir? Coral inquired as she walked over to him. Naruto nodded, giving an embarrassed chuckle. I can't read. Oh, well, let me just ask you a few questions, the woman said grabbing the clipboard and watching his trembling right hand. Full name? She asked while readying her pin. Uzumaki Naruto. Naruto answered in standard fashion. She looked at him confused. Which is first, the given name, or the surname? Oh, Naruto Uzumaki. Naruto corrected himself to fit what she wanted. Very good, Coral praised a little. And identification? Um, Naruto Uzumaki? Naruto answered nervously. No, the nurse shook her head. What gender do you identify as? Um, human. Naruto once again answered nervously. Sir, Coral took a deep breath. Do you identify as male, female, or non-binary? Naruto looked thoroughly confused. Um, last time I checked, I was a man. Oh crap, you guys didn't cut it off, did you databeo? The nurse laughed at his little uproar. No, we assure you it's still attached. Oh, okay then. Nearly gave me a heart attack. But I'm a guy. So I'm a man, Naruto answered with a nod. Okay, the nurse pinched her nose. Are you, or have you been sexually active in the past year? Naruto blushed a little bit. Not really. Have you had sexual intercourse? The nurse was getting slightly frustrated. Oral sex? I had sex, Naruto admitted with a blush, as he recalled his last time traveling with Jiraiya. It was with a girl that I met, and well, did you use protection? Coral stopped him from speaking, like a condom? Yes, Naruto answered. I used a condom. Splendid. Any medical history, familial issues? Coral inquired as she readied her pin. Well, I've been stabbed in the chest twice. I broke my leg and arm when I was a kid. Naruto rubbed the back of his head. That's about it. When you said stabbed, were you a victim of a crime? Or were you working? The nurse inquired as she got ready to finish the paperwork. Naruto struggled to come up with an answer, but then smiled. I was out stopping bad guys. Mercenary? She asked. Um, yeah, I'm a mercenary, Naruto answered. A big dumb goofy smile plastered on his face to sell the lie. The nurse then just shook her head. Idiot. No wonder you got beaten nearly to death. You mercenaries are all the same, trying to play huntsman. Well, do you have insurance? Uh. Naruto took a deep breath before squeaking. Not really. Then quite frankly you owe this hospital a debt, the nurse stated as she got up. We will have you get in touch with an adjuster so you can work on paying the bill through your line of work. I'm sure, that'll be fine. Sorry, if I offended you or anything, Nurse Coral. Naruto rubbed the back of his head bashfully. The nurse sighed. It's not you. I had a friend who decided it had been a good idea to become a mercenary. He died, she told him, and then looked at him with her orange eyes. You do well to keep your young life safeguarded. Too many young people die to grim thinking they can make a difference. Grim? Naruto mentally questioned, Okay, Nurse Coral, when can I leave? Tomorrow, you'll be given the green light to leave. Your personal effects will be delivered to you tonight, Nurse Coral answered him before walking out of the room. The blonde sat on the bed, taking a deep breath. Well, that could have gone better. He looked at his arms and then at his legs. They still felt a little stiff. Slowly getting off the bed, Naruto entered a fighting stance before throwing a couple of jabs in the air in front of him. Naruto was handed a pair of black pants and an orange tunic. The tunic had long sleeves and was made of very soft fabric. Naruto noticed that his headband's sash was damaged, torn up, but his headband remained intact. There was a yellow sash obviously used to help tie his pants around his waist. He also received a pair of all-terrain boots, along with several of his shuriken. His pouches were mostly ruined, save for one, which still had a kanai in it. 
Undressing out of his medical clothes, Naruto began putting together his outfit and grimaced when he felt pain in his right arm. The doctor said he'd have some healing to do. Sighing, Naruto just placed himself in the mindset of putting as much distance between himself and the hospital as possible. Gathering his bearings, Naruto took a deep breath and began to mentally go over the things he had. Sighing, he got himself walking out of the door. It felt weird as people gave him some looks. A nurse nodded with a smile. Apparently, he was well talked about as the miracle guy for surviving all that he did. It didn't take long for Naruto to get outside of the hospital. Looking around the arid city, he frowned. There were very few plants in the area, and he didn't know what to do with himself. So, he took a step forward, then another and another. People were buzzing through the city streets, talking and gossiping. Stop the oppression. He heard someone shout. Down with the Schnee Dust Company, a woman screamed. Bunch of crooks and thieves. Down with the Schnee Dust Company. They are a bunch of crooks and thieves. A group of people chanted. This caught his eye as he watched the people from afar. All of them had the animal traits he saw on some of the nurses, Faunus. Naruto himself was confused about what he should have listed himself as, considering he had whiskers on his face. Then again, it wasn't like they occurred naturally. His parents were human. He just happened to get bathed in Karama's chakra before being born. That's when he heard sirens of some kind. He watched his men in fancy suits no different than the bastard Gato War stood outside of a building. The strange machines with the sirens pulled up toward the building, where he saw people with armor and shields step out. They all had clubs in their hands, and a bigger machine pulled up as well. This one had a cannon of some kind mounted on top. Attention all protesters. The lead of the group of armed people spoke in a machine-like tone. Please desist and return to your dwellings. Man, that ain't right. Hell no. We're protesting unfair pay. We work just as hard as our human co-workers. We deserve to be paid just as much. The Schnee Dust Company owes us a pension, as they do with the humans. This is your final warning. We will use force. The same person stated, only for some children to step up front. Naruto watched as they armed the cannon on top of the large machine. Three. Protesters kept chanting, two. The armed people chuckled and laughed. They seemed eager to be beating on people. Naruto's hands found themselves gripping each other. Without thinking twice, he moved. The cannon started firing a stream of water, aimed right at the children. Naruto formed a hand seal before several clones popped into existence by him. He managed to get in front of the kids, taking the full brunt of the water blast. He stood there, anchoring himself to the ground with chakra as the people blasted him with a cannon full of water. He wouldn't lie. It felt refreshing, the cold water. After the water died down, the lead of the group stepped up to Naruto. What in the blue blazes are you doing, Critter? Don't you dare use a semblance again. Deactivated immediately? The man yelled right in the blonde's face. Naruto growled as he glared right into the man's eyes. Why don't you stop what you're doing? You could have gotten children hurt. Oh, you animals are all the same, the man complained. You belong in the mines. Kiss our ass. A man from the crowd shouted. Shut your jaws, go back to your dens, you mangy critters. The man shouted at the people behind Naruto. Naruto looked at the symbol on their uniform. Are you guys police? No, we're security guards, and you're on Shni property. The security guard screamed. The blonde then smirked. Is that so? He walked backward. The guard followed. Yeah, back up, flea bag. Oh, Naruto looked down at the line he secretly drew in the sand. So, are you off Shni property? Yeah, what about it, you little bis ack? Naruto swung his left hand, catching him right in the face. The blow was powerful enough to shatter his helmet. The man's mouth spat up blood before he hit the ground, hitting it with a hard thud. The crowd behind Naruto stood silently before cheering. The other security guards began beating their clubs against their riot shields. Taking a deep breath, Naruto got ready to fight. The first one to move forward gets my foot up their ass, Databeo. Enough. Naruto heard from somewhere behind him. A large, well-built man walked through the crowd. People separated in his presence. He seemed very well respected. The man looked right at Naruto, who was still on edge. Stand down, kinsman. The man ordered Naruto. There's no need for more violence. It's the police chief. The man in the suit greeted the man mockingly. The caterer of the beasts. Enough. The police chief replied with a flat tone. This has gone on long enough. I came down personally to inform you that you'll be taken into custody if another attack happens again. Attack? These vermin came onto my property first. Mr. Schnee's property is my responsibility, 
the man in the suit stated, and I'll not let some wild beasts tarnish it because they don't like their pay. Naruto looked up at the man, growling as his fists balled up. The police chief just placed his hand on Naruto's shoulder, pushing him back. The police chief stared down the suit until the suit lost his nerve. Snapping his fingers, all the guards backed off. The one on the ground slowly got up. He glared right at Naruto, spitting a splotch of blood on the ground at his feet. The former Jinchuriki just flicked the man off. Kick your ass later, Databeo. Next time I see you, you'll be going in the hospital, you fucking animal. The punched out security guard screamed. Naruto just scoffed. Whatever, asshole. The blonde backed away into the crowd, being met by a few people patting his back. The woman from earlier stopped, throwing her arms around him. He felt weird, looking at the people. Thank you, kinsman. The woman thanked him. Those bastards were going to blast our kids. Yeah. What's your name? A man with rough skin yelled, shaking Naruto by the shoulder with a smile on his face. Naruto looked at them, then smiled. My name is Naruto. Life had a funny way of working its wonders. Naruto didn't know if the vision he had was just some sort of drug-induced fever dream or the actual deal. Taking a deep breath, he looked at the bubbly brown liquid in front of him. It was called beer, and apparently, someone bought it for him. He had been struggling to adapt. This world was totally different than the one he remembered. Was it even the same one? Taking the bottle into his right hand, which slightly trembled, Naruto tilted it back. The liquid was very offensive, but he didn't want to punch a gift horse in the mouth. Quickly downing the contents, the blonde just coughed at the end of it all. Music played in the background. The throbbing of speakers in this club was weird. It radiated through him. The music was pretty good. He didn't know what it was exactly. It was like a mix between killer bees rapping and loud music. He got up from the bar. The whiskered blonde just took a moment to think about what he would do next. The people he had helped earlier provided him with a place to stay. It wasn't some fancy apartment, not some house. Merely a couch in a room. He could try to keep to his words and do mercenary work. It couldn't possibly be that hard, right? All the time in the world, time. That's all he pretty much had. Getting up from the bar after thinking this over, Naruto felt hazy. It was a hollow feeling. He closed his eyes as he walked, dodging around people. Perhaps the vision of Hagoromo and that light god guy was just a drug-induced fever dream. It didn't seem like they knew what they wanted him for, just that they needed him for something, and that just doesn't make any sense. The way he felt right now was just awful, and he didn't even have a friend to share his grief with. Karama was, for the longest time, a foe. He'd do everything in his power to take over him. He'd do anything to make Naruto irate. Yet, at the end, it was because he was hurt. No different than the way Naruto was, treated differently out of fear. Walking out of the bar, Naruto had to watch his step as one of these vehicles sped past him. They weren't common in vacuo from what he understood, but sometimes people on certain nights didn't watch where they were going. At least, that's what one of the people he'd been staying with said at least. Shuffling along the road, the teen stopped. I know you've been following me. A chortle escaped the lips of a man and his cronies. It was the security guard from the other day that Naruto punched. The teen took a deep breath as he looked at the five men that slowly surrounded him. His blue eyes scanned over them. He noticed one had a weapon called a gun in his hand. The one with the gun was a large, pudgy-looking man. He noted that it was the same man that operated the water cannon trying to blast kids. The man standing by the security guard had brass knuckles, and two others had clubs in their hands. There was a tense moment in the air when the security guy produced a knife from his back pocket. Figures an animal like you would see us in this dark. They moved from behind a building at the guard's words. Tell me, critter, are you going to take your punishment willingly? I'm sorry. Naruto mocked them as he stared them down. Are you suggesting that you'd be able to hurt me? Smart little bastard. The pudgy man pointed the gun at him. We won't kill you. We'll just put you in the hospital for a while. You guys are in way over your heads, Databeo. Naruto growled as he glared at them. You need to either pack your tails between your legs and go, or you need to just stand aside. I'm not going to give any wrong thinking. I will hurt you. Do you understand that, bastards? The security guard sneered as the pudgy man pointed the gun at him. Well, we'll just say you attacked first. Naruto shook his head, then appeared in front of the pudgy man in a blur of speed. He didn't give them time to react before slamming a right hook into the man's jaw. The big man fell over, knocked out cold by the first punch. Everyone's expression was one of shock as Naruto turned on his heel and kicked a club-wielding goon solidly to the ground. The blonde kicked the gun away in one fluid motion, sending it straight down the alleyway, 
so no one could reach it before he reached them. All of this was in one fluid motion, with no pause. The three remaining men backed up, looking at each other. Naruto focused on the one with brass knuckles before taking a step forward. He didn't show any emotion, just a scowl on his face as he used his left forearm to block a punch. The brass knuckle goon grunted as Naruto grabbed his arm and pushed him out, gripping him tightly. Then Naruto kicked up, shattering the man's arm. He heard the man wail in pain as his grip loosened. The security guard screamed out a profanity before charging with his knife, sticking straight out. Scoffing, Naruto deflected the stab with the back of his hand before slamming his left fist straight into the man's face. The man's nose splattered across Naruto's chakra-enhanced punch, sending him careening into the side of a building and then slamming into the ground. The blonde turned his eye toward the last guy, the one with a billy club, who slowly backed away. Naruto took one more step forward before the man bolted. The blonde shook his head, walked over to the down security guard, and crouched down. The guard looked up at him, spite and hatred filling his eyes to the brim. Naruto sighed as he looked right into the man's eyes. It's not the first time someone has given me that look. Honestly, it probably won't be the last, Databeo. But, the security guard groaned in pain. You're not Huntsman, there's no way. You're right, the blonde clapped mockingly. But you still haven't learned the point. Naruto leaned down to the man's ear. The point is that I could have easily slit your throat open and walked away. You came at me, and your dumbass didn't notice a security camera right outside of the bar. The man's eyes widened, and he shook looking up at Naruto. Please don't. I won't. Naruto stood back up, reassuring the man. But this better be the last time I ever see you trying to hurt someone else. Yes, sir. I promise, sir. Don't kill me, sir. The guard rambled as Naruto walked away. The security guard got up, wiping his bloody face. The others slowly got up as well, limping away with their tails between their legs. A couple of months went by, and Naruto was slowly adapting to the lifestyle of this strange world. The people that took him and believed him to be a faunus, just like them. He told them the truth, however, that he was human. While a few gave him sideways looks, the majority still accepted him. Running odd jobs for people, Naruto had begun to save money, something called lean. The few couches he slept on were returned with favors, such as package delivery or simply cleaning. In his spare time, finding that he didn't need to watch his back against a lot of people, Naruto began to practice. In the wide expanse of the desert, he found solace. On a large rock overlooking sand dunes, Naruto sat, his hands cupped in front of him. Deep, long breaths escaped his lips. Slowly, an orange liner appeared over his eyes as he began absorbing nature chakra around himself. Acclimation took time, as the very sparse amount usually followed the winds. The teen stood up, taking one last deep breath before his eyes snapped open. They were golden, unlike regular human eyes, with pupils in the shape of a toad's pupil. His orange Sherwani blew in the wind as his long coat was hit by a gust. Under the Sherwani was a black shirt that went down to just above his knees, a korda. Slowly moving his hands around in various stances, Naruto breathed through his nose. It was Tai Chi, something he learned while in Mayaboku as well, which helped him stay still and balanced. Ma had taught him it at night, saying it would help him relax. Taking time to go through the steps, the blonde moved his chakra around his body. The tremble in his right hand was slowly going away. On his hip was the headband, tied in a black sash around his blue pants. Finishing his Tai Chi meditation, Naruto jumped off the rock, landing in front of it. He turned around and cocked his fist back. Roaring with a mighty war cry, Naruto slammed his right fist into the massive stone. It cracked, spreading across it and beginning to fall apart. With the stone in pieces, Naruto formed a single hand seal before several clones popped into existence. They weren't sage-enhanced clones, just regular run-of-the-mill clones. Dropping into a fighting stance, Naruto glanced at them. Giving them a nod, they ran at him full speed. He blocked the first with his forearm before following through with a front kick, dispersing it. Kicking up sand as he landed, Naruto threw his elbow back, destroying another clone when he slammed it into its face. The last remaining clones tried to attack him with Rasengan, but he dodged them. Landing on top of small stones, Naruto gripped them with his chakra before jumping and slinging them off his feet. The clones unfortunate enough to get in the path of them were destroyed. The last clone entered sage mode and attacked. Naruto and it clashed forearms, exchanging blows. With his power split down the middle with this clone, it was going to put up a good challenge. Blocking several jabs with his forearms, Naruto leaned back when he felt a pressure wave come off the last punch the clone threw. 
The pressure wave missed him completely, and while continuing to lean back, Naruto flipped onto his hands. He throws a couple of kicks while standing on his hands before angling himself to sweep kick his clone. The clone is knocked off balance, just as Naruto gets up and launches a nature chakra-enhanced punch into its side. The clones skid across the desert sand before dispersing. The knowledge of how it got beaten, along with the flaws in its stance that left it open, was transmitted to Naruto. Taking a deep breath, Naruto exits sage mode before slowly walking back toward Vacuo City. Naruto was standing guard over the group of protesters, a mix of faunus and some humans. This was an odd job he had for the day. The security guards that tried to ambush him outside of these events each came back bloody and broken like the first one. They knew better, and by the looks of the man atop the catwalk, his mere presence unnerved them. Which is why after today's demonstrations, people were stunned to see the man come down. The well-dressed man looked Naruto over as he walked straight up to his face. He sneers, pushing his glasses up, and then takes out a strange notepad of some kind. You've been at this for four months, the well-dressed man told Naruto. Yet, I don't think your fellow critters give you anything other than a couch. Naruto glares back at the man. What's your game, Nico Databeo? No games, the man, Nico, revealed. I want to pay you. I want to buy your loyalty. You've got a lot of nerve doing this blatantly in front of people. Naruto growled as he began to crack his knuckles. What are you writing down? A check. Nico tells Naruto while laughing. Name your price. The whiskered blonde folded his arms, looking behind him. Some of the faunus behind him looked down, believing he'd take the money. The blonde smirks, looking at the check and then holding out his hand. People gasped from behind him. He had been learning to write since he took the odd jobs. He knew how to write basic words, and even some unsavory ones as well. Naruto finished signing the check. This is what I want. Shove this up your ass, Nico yelled as he threw the check at Naruto. Do you take me for a complete fucking idiot? Hell, yeah I do. Naruto argued as he pushed the man back. You take these people's jobs because they look a little different and make them miserable. I don't care if you're human or a faunus. You have basic rights to be happy. Yeah, what Naruto said. Tell that bastard. We want justice. Oh, you must be so happy with yourself. Nico spat as he glared right at Naruto. I'm telling you right now. None of these animals will get their jobs back under my leadership. The blonde looked back at them, then scoffed as he turned his back toward Nico. The man was confused. He merely turned the cheek. But why? Naruto then answered that silent question. You're right about that, under your leadership. So, the former Jinchuriki chuckled. You can either leave, or I'll make you leave. Is that a threat, you little bastard? Nico screamed as he kept looking at Naruto's back. The blue-eyed teen responded with a dark glint in his eyes. It's a promise, Nico. Turning his head back toward the crowd, Naruto sighed. Okay, guys, let's pack it up for the day. My watch is over, and I think it's high time you all got something to drink and spent time with your families. The group grumbled as they dispersed, none of it directed at the blonde. Naruto just kept standing there. His back turned, took a deep breath. He turned to Nico, perhaps as a courtesy, perhaps as an intimidation. The two glared at one another. Both hated each other. Nico. Naruto said the businessman's name. There was once a person like you. When I was young, I went with my teacher on a mission. He had bought that village and ran the people like slaves. He hurt those who'd stand up to him. Sounds like a ruthless businessman. What's your point? Nico sounded annoyed. The point is that he tried to kill a man that he paid to cut his costs. The blonde then gave a dark chuckle. That man ended up cutting him open. Nico's eyes widened. You wouldn't dare. You're no murderer. It's a fair warning, Nico. Naruto warned as he glared right into the man's eyes. Don't do like your henchmen have been doing, or you'll meet the same fate. Naruto walked away, looking over his shoulder. Do the right thing, Databeo. The bar was playing music loudly as Naruto entered it. He was walking with the person most recently taking him in for the week. It was kind of a funny little exchange program, and Naruto was his own commodity. The sounds of violins and people clapping their hands while dancing in the middle filled the room. Gotta say, Naruto. The police chief Tigre greeted the teen. You continue to impress me on how much paperwork you give me and my boys. Naruto gave a chortle before smiling. Don't mention it. I'll probably be leaving Vacuo once this blows over. Well crap son. Tigre motioned Naruto to follow him. I was hoping if you'd been interested in joining the force. Nah. Naruto shook his head. Police work isn't for me. Tigre sighed and then tapped the bar. How about a beer then? Honestly. Naruto laughed as he looked at the man. 
I prefer spirits. Very well then, Tigray replied, and then looked at the bartender. I need a shot of Krogan's. Tigray watches as the man slides the glass over to him, handing it Naruto while he held his beer in the other hand. Both clink their glasses together before Naruto slams the shot back. He winces at the burning. Whatever Krogan's was it was strong. Holy crap Databeo! Naruto gasped as he looked at the shot glass. The hell was that? 94 proof. It'll put hair on ya, squirt. Tigre ruffles Naruto's hair, and then looks over the teen's shoulder. Hey, don't look now, but there's a lady looking right at you. Hmm. Naruto hummed and looked over his shoulder. The lady looking at him was young. She had deep crimson hair and red eyes. She was very beautiful, being voluptuous. Naruto's old sensei Jiraiya would have had a field day right now, probably trying to flirt with her even before she took notice of him. She was talking to her friends, getting up from the table she was at. She walks up to Naruto. She was slightly taller than him, probably a couple of years older as well. She had a sway to her hips. She was being flirtatious and though Naruto tried his best to ignore a certain part of him, there was an itch, and that itch hadn't been scratched in a very long time. So, instead of walking away, he just waited for her to walk over to him. Ah, the hero of the sandworm. She greets him. It is a pleasure to meet you. Um, hi, my name's Naruto, he replied. There was a slight blush on his cheeks. She laughs and looks at him coyly in the eye. See something you like? I'm just going to leave you two alone. Tigre chuckled as he walked away from Naruto. Have fun, lad. Naruto nervously chuckled. Don't mind the guy. Um, who are you? My name is Rosa. She took his hand before whispering right into his ear. And I want to dance. The door to an in-room was kicked open. Naruto was currently locking lips with Rosa as they entered the room. There was something electric in her kiss. It wasn't love or anything. It was just passion. The girl laughs as she broke the kiss, pushing him toward the bed. Naruto hit the bed hard enough to bounce up a little bit. He was breathing hard. Perhaps it was the dancing, the alcohol? Maybe it was the so-called itch that everyone had and needed to be scratched every so often. Rosa looks at him. Her hungry eyes scanned over his body. My oh my. What am I going to do with you? The teasing in her voice made chills run down Naruto's spine. Um, Rosa-chan, I, um, oh. She walks over to the end door, closing it. What's up, stud? She grabs a disc of some kind before opening a device called a CD player. Smoot music started playing over from the speakers, and she was just teasing him further. She accidentally dropped the CD case before slowly rising back up to put it up in a pack she had with her. Who is this? Naruto asked bashfully. She turns to him, laughing. Marvin Gaye. Sexual healing. Naruto woke up the next morning as the sun breached the window. Rosa was lying next to him. The only thing covering them was a blanket. Their clothes had been discarded across the room, and there was a layer of dry sweat on Naruto as he leaned up into the small rays of light. Breathing hard, Naruto checked himself over. There were a few love bites from her. She turned out to be a faunus when her claws had scratched him. They had used protection. Getting up from the bed and putting on some clothes, Naruto walked into the bathroom and began to wipe away some of the dried sweat. He gripped the edge of the sink before looking into it. He had some lipstick on his face, which he began to wipe up. Leaving the bathroom, Naruto retrieved his shirt just as Rosa woke up. She looked at him, smiling, with a glow of red still around her face. It wasn't a wonder that they hadn't been called out for a noise complaint. Mostly because, while Naruto wasn't knowledgeable, he had the stamina to go the distance. Plus, he was a very attentive lover. Hey there, stud, she chuckled while looking at him. Some party last night, right? Yeah, Naruto nervously replied. Are you okay? I hope I didn't hurt you. Pfft, she blew raspberries. I'm perfectly fine. She looked at her effects. Can you hand me some of my stuff? Sure. Naruto reached down and threw her garments to her. So, how was I? Very passionate. Plus the cute little way you shout that one word, Dada, Detino. What is it? Rosa inquired as she tried to remember the word. Databeo, Naruto nervously answered her. It's a verbal tick of mine. I can tell. I think I counted an entire sentence of you shouting that, she said from under the blanket as she started putting on clothes. The redhead got up from the bed, fooling with her hair to fix it up a little. Putting it back into its ponytail from before last night's activities, she walked over to Naruto, giving him a very passionate kiss. The blonde slowly rubbed her face, doing the same. Naruto sighed, however, after they broke the kiss. We're not, are we? Sorry, stud, she apologized with a small giggle. But I'm the type of gal that just wants fun. 
Naruto sighed as she gave him one more kiss. But I slipped my scroll number in the nightstand if you want another round with me. She got to the door. See you around, Naruto. Hopefully soon. She walked out of the room, closing the door behind her. When she did, however, Naruto just sat back on the bed, holding his face. Had he wanted the sex? Yes. Did it make him feel any better? Also yes. Maybe? However, now he just felt like he had been used and thrown away. It wasn't Rose's fault. She made it perfectly clear that this was a fling. That moment of being with someone made Naruto happier than he had been in months. It was, however, very fleeting. She didn't even invite him to breakfast, which meant that although they had a night together, she probably just wanted her fun. Growling, Naruto punched the bed before getting up. He needed to check out by 11, and it was already 10.50. Slowly, he exited the room, putting on his shoes in the hallway. There, Naruto was met with the eyes of neighbors. They all had heavy blushes on their faces. This was a love hotel, after all. Getting out of the hall, Naruto walked down to the desk. Checking out. All right, the desk attendant concurred. Name? Naruto Uzumaki, Naruto replied, watching her type a few things on a computer. Mr. Uzumaki, thank you for using our hotel services. Please have a beautiful day, and don't be too shy to come back. Yeah, sure, Naruto said as he walked out, tucking his hands into his pockets back into the burning hot sun of an April in vacuo. Thank you for watching. If you liked our video, please hit the like button, subscribe for updates, and follow our Twitter, info in description. Credits go to the story's author, with details below. Don't miss out on our other content, click on the suggested video for more stories and adventures. We appreciate your support, and look forward to seeing you in our next video.